Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I think isn't really talked about, which is obviously something that we do here. And that is that over the holiday break, which was now a few weeks ago, I was reading and it dawned on me that I've never been the kind of person who sets New Year's resolutions. That's not typically my MO. And they just have never really resonated with me. And I was thinking about why that is. And I came across this article, and I honestly can't remember where, but I came across this article that talked about how the winter time, I'm in Toronto and it gets cold and icy here for several months. And the article talked about how the winter, the cold, is a really awkward time to be setting new resolutions, brand new goals, brand new resolutions. And I thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It really seems out of, it feels out of alignment with me to be setting brand new goals, brand new resolutions in the winter. And I began to have a better understanding through this thought process of why that is. And when we think about what's going on outside of our institutions, outside of our organizations, outside of our companies, outside of anything that is institutionalized here, we think about the environment and what's going on in the environment around us. Specifically, as I said, I'm in Toronto where it's cold. And so what is going on in the environment? I'm talking about the natural environment. And the natural environment includes includes wildlife, includes forests, includes anything that's not our urban urban planned city, our buildings, our roads. And what's hap- what's happening in the natural environment is hibernation, is slowing down, is rest is hibernation for survival. And this all began to make a lot of sense to me because in the winter time, I actually tend to really focus inward. I tend to naturally focus inward. And perhaps this is why setting New Year's resolutions has always felt really unnatural to me because it's starting new things or committing to these potentially new things that I never really felt in alignment with. And so once I began to think about the environment and what's actually happening in the natural world, again, not the built world, but the natural world in the winter time, which is smack in the, you know, right smack where New Year's is for us, it began to make more sense. So I began to realize, yes, I do look more inward in the winter time. And things for me, I try to get a little bit quieter, right? I try to recenter. I try to reevaluate things that aren't working, things that are. And I really do this critical analysis of what's going on. What's going on is are things working the way that they're supposed to? And I still am very reflective about my goals, about what I intend those goals to be and continue to be, and maybe they change and that's okay. But what we really have to focus on, what I have to focus on, I realize what's in alignment with me to focus on is actually more of that recentering and realigning than setting these big new goals that, you know, we all, we all hear what happens and we all know what happens with these big new goals by February. They're usually somewhere near the door on their way out. 
And so I would like to propose a new way of thinking about these resolutions that you may have committed to a few weeks ago over New Year's. And this isn't to say that New Year's resolutions are bad. If they resonate with you, do you go for it. If they don't resonate with you, then maybe this way will. So I want to focus here on a few main strategies for how we can use the new year to our benefit without feeling the pressure to create these new year's resolutions that upend everything and that that start things that seem to, or at least feel like they may start things from scratch. So the first is that I want to remind all of us that especially within our community, our goals don't start at New Year's. Our community members here at Apply Yourself have wanted to apply to their programs or have wanted advancement in their professional roles for months already or even years. And so starting resolutions from scratch in the new year often feels out of alignment because we're continuing to work on goals that don't start in the new year. They've started long before that. And so just a little bit of perspective here on perhaps one reason, another reason why these resolutions may not work at certain times in our lives. So what I'd like to do is propose three ways that I think are actually really productive, not only during this time of year, at the beginning of the year, but also at any time of year. And none none of this requires drastic change. As we know, drastic change doesn't lead to the most productivity, in fact, and doesn't actually necessarily move the needle. What we need is incremental steps that are thoughtful, that are intentional, that are meaningful in order to move that needle. And so this, these strategies actually work for any time in the year. And I come back constantly to these strategies probably every single day in order to guide my next steps. So here they are. The first is recentering and realigning. What does that mean? Recentering and realigning means coming back to what feels right to us, coming back to what feels in alignment, what feels the most in line with us. Sometimes we don't know exactly what that is and we have to go by our intuition. We have to go by our feeling. And often what I hear is the use of the word icky. So this feels icky to me or that doesn't feel icky to me. This feels less icky to me. And so what we really want to do is use the way that we feel, use our intuition in order to guide us. And you've got to, you've got to learn to trust yourself, right? And this is part of what we work on here in this community is trusting our intuition because we're backing that with thoughtfulness, with analysis of not only what it is that that we are going through, but also what it is that we have to do in order to get to where we want to go. So realigning and recentering is a really internal job. It's a really internal job. We talk about this all the time when it comes to internal versus external validation. We talk about this all the time with regards to how to make thoughtful and intentional decisions. And so this first step is recentering and realigning with what it is that you actually want to do. We use visualization exercises for this as well. What feels good to you moving forward? What feels icky? What doesn't feel right? If you decide to go down one path, and it could be a big choice or a small choice, it doesn't matter what it is, what feels the best to you? What feels the best to you? So that is the first thing to consider. And that is the first thing that I do when I am focusing on my next stages of growth. This is how we identify sometimes what the next stages of growth are going to be, what direction those are going to take, recentering and realigning, figuring out what it is that you want and your goals might change. And as I've said, that's okay as long as we're doing it thoughtfully and intentionally. And we talked about this in the episode called I'm No Quitter as well. So take a listen to that too, if this is something that resonates with you. 
Next, after we've decided what feels good to us, what doesn't feel good to us, what feels in alignment with what we want, with our goals, and with the kind of life that we want to build, then we've got to commit. We have to commit. And so this is why it's so important that we're not always setting brand new massive goals just because it's a certain time of year, just because it's New Year's. And what I often hear from students, from young professionals who come and ask for help is, you know, I had this, you know, big goal that I decided to work on in January and it just hasn't panned out. And when we actually unpack why something hasn't panned out, it's often because that goal was made without the thoughtfulness without the intentionality behind it. So for example, there may be deadlines that apply. Many master's programs have their deadlines in January and February. And so if we make a new year's resolution, I'm going to get apply to and get into this program and it's January 1st and your deadline is on January 15th or 20th or February 1st, which are typically those main deadlines at the beginning of the year you may be able to apply fairly quickly, but you may not have all your ducks in a row in time, especially because applications take time to develop. It's absolutely possible, but they take time to develop. And so we have to remember that we, as we're setting our goals, there are other things that we have to consider when it comes to actually being thoughtful about implementation of the steps that we need to take in order to achieve those goals. So the next step, as I've said, is commitment. Commitment has many different components to it. The first is being accountable to ourselves, making sure that we are somehow remaining accountable. And as part of our community, that's never a problem for you because we meet every single week and we bring our goals, we bring our intentions, we bring our materials, and we work through every single thing so that there's never anything left unturned. There's uh, and never any stone left unturned. And so that there is never a question that you have that is holding you back. You will never hit a bump in the road that we cannot solve together. We always, always do in a way that strategically helps you move forward. So committing means we have to be accountable to ourselves. And a lot of the time we need support with that because commitment and accountability are things that we actually need. Sometimes we need to ask questions to move forward. Often we need to ask questions to move forward. And so accountability is a big part of this here. Commitment is also taking yourself seriously, right? How many times do we commit to something or purport to commit to something And then we say, oh, like, I'll do it later. Or, oh, I've written out this schedule for myself. I am, I used to do this a lot. I would write out a schedule for myself. And then I would, you know, during busy times of year or whatever. And then when it got to like that day, that time, and I, you know, wanted, I was working on something else, perhaps that took longer than I anticipated, which happens. And we talk about that too. Or... Sometimes I just didn't feel like doing it, which is absolutely normal. And I would think to myself, well, I came up with this schedule. No one's going to be on top of me if I don't do it. And so I would sometimes do the other thing, whatever it was. And as you progress, you realize that, I mean, a few things, maybe the schedules that I used to make when I was a student weren't all that helpful. And that is probably true because I used to, just like our community members before they join, I used to also focus on the amount of time, the number of pages, the numbers rather than progress. And so I think that there's actually more to this and more to being effective in our commitment to ourselves than just saying like, yes, I'm committed. It's also how are we committing? What are the tools? What are the strategies that we're using to commit? And are they working for us? Because obviously sometimes the strategies that I was using as a student didn't necessarily work. And now I have learned a lot, (laughs) so much so that I actually train on this now. And so it's really important that 
the strategies that we're using to keep ourselves accountable and the strategies that we're putting in place, those tools that we're using are actually serving us, that they are not hindering our advancement. They're actually serving us. So that is the second strategy here. The third strategy in order to make sure that you are staying centered, staying aligned, and that you are going to reach those goals that you are setting to build this life beyond your wildest dreams, and yes, it is absolutely possible, is consistency. We talk about consistency all the time here. Consistency is really important because consistency takes discipline. Consistency takes discipline. And I say all the time, I've said it before here on this podcast, discipline is not a prison at all. It's not a punishment. Discipline is what allows you to create. It's what allows you to come back and continue where you left off. It is what allows you to show up for yourself. It is, discipline is not a prison. Discipline is what sets you free. And it is what allows you to build anything that you want, anything that you want for your life. And so it's really important that we work on discipline and part of discipline is focus, right? These are skills. These are really, really important skills that we have to learn in order to be able to succeed. So by being consistent, it means that we are developing the skill of discipline so we keep showing up for ourselves. And so that allows you to continue to come back to these goals, continue to be intentional and thoughtful about how you are pursuing these goals, how you are strategizing through them step by step, okay? Because goals start out as big things and then we have to break them down into smaller pieces like a project. Imagine that each one of your goals, you are having to manage like a project. So you are now the project manager of your goals. You have to be centered, you have to be aligned, you have to be committed, and you have to be consistent as you go through every single one of those steps that is required for you to reach that goal. Because you're not just going to wake up one morning and have it be done. It's not good. It doesn't work that way. You have to work on every single step. And we talked about this in the podcast about the slog, the 99% of the time that we spend on our journey is in what feels like the slog only to come up for those milestones of celebration every so often. And that's what I call the 1% because the 99% of the time is when we are actually coming back consistently, taking what feels like teeny tiny steps toward our bigger goals. And so that is the third strategy in order to make sure that we are not only setting goals that will take us further toward our lives beyond our wildest dreams, building them, creating them, but also carrying them out, carrying out those smaller steps that are totally required in order to achieve every single one of our goals, which is absolutely possible. And don't let anyone tell you that it's not. So number one, recenter and realign. Number two, commit. Number three, be consistent and build that skill of discipline and focus. Okay. If you have any questions about any of this, reach out to me, send me an email, adrian at applyyourselfglobal.com and, or send me a DM on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal. And I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us today and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.